The home finale tonight for the Southeastern men's basketball team as they host the University of Central Arkansas. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the University Center right here on the beautiful campus of Southeastern Louisiana here in Hammond, Louisiana. I'm Chris Selene. For the final time, the Lions take the floor here in 2019 and 20 at the University Center. The Lions look to finish the season out on a high note as they took a giant step in doing just that Saturday as they defeated Northwestern State 95-92. to The Lions come in with a record of 7-22 overall, 4-14 in the conference. But, again, and I'm going to talk about this throughout the broadcast today, they have really been a lot better than that record. But, a lot of people, uh, you know, kind of live and die by the your record is who uh, you are, but I just don't feel like that's the case with this team. But anyway, uh, tonight uh, the Lions look for a little bit of a payback as they take on the Bears of UCA. The Bears defeated the Lions 88-68 to January 29th in Conway, Arkansas. But uh, we'll talk more about that. We'll give you a tale of the tape as the Lions and Bears are coming your way next right here on the Southeastern Sports Network. The countdown to Katie has begun. The Southland Conference Basketball Tournament at the Merrill Center in Katy, Texas. Experience it live as Southland Strong teams compete for a tournament title and a chance to go to the dance. It's affordable family fun and great college hoops action. Tickets for the Southland Conference Basketball Tournament are on sale through school ticket offices and Ticketmaster.com. What's up, Lion fans? Snake, Big Easy Loft, of the world famous Harlem Globetrotters, and also Southeastern Louisiana University. Can't wait to be back home, most 12th, in the University Center. Can't wait to see you there. Line up. Welcome back to the University Center fans as we get you set for tip-off between your Southeastern Lions and the Central Arkansas Bears. The Lions will look to ride the hot hand of junior Brandon Gonzalez, who has been nothing short of spectacular the last three games. The six-foot-six guard from Punta Gorda, Florida, is averaging 23 points per game over the last three contests, scoring 21 against Abilene Christian, 23 at McNeese, and 25 this past Saturday against Northwestern State. During the stretch, he's shooting 25 for 47 from the field for 53% and 12 out of 29 from the three-point line for 41%. And all three of those games, fans, he has set a new career high. So uh, just an unbelievable stretch for Brandon Gonzalez, and hopefully that continues here tonight. The Bears come in with a record of 10-19 and 19 overall, 9-9 nine and nine in the Southland. They're on the heels of a 75-70 loss Saturday night at Abilene Christian. Uh, UCA is led by junior transfer from BYU, Ryan Bergerson. The Boise, Idaho native is averaging 15.6 points per game to lead the Bears. Uh, another guy to definitely keep an eye on tonight for the Bears is junior and second team preseason all-conference DeAndre Jones, who to me is probably one of the more underrated guards in the entire conference. He's just, uh, he's not overly flashy, but he is as smooth and basketball savvy as anybody in the conference. Him and Vaughn Julian, very similar. Uh, both of them right there at the top of the conference in assists as uh, Jones comes in with 120 assists on the season, and he missed what, nine, ten games already, fans. So, uh, Jones certainly the engine for this uh, Bears basketball team. He'll be somebody 
that the Lions guard is going to have to do a good job of containing if the Lions are, in fact, going to come away with a victory. But uh, Central Arkansas has kind of been a tough team to figure out this year. The Bears have been as tough as anybody at home this year as they are 8-3 and three at the Ferris Center but have kind of struggled on the road as they're 2-16 and 16 away from home. Hopefully for the Lions, that trend will continue as we're just about uh, four minutes or so from the opening tip-off of this one, the Lions of Southeastern and the Bears of Central Arkansas. As we take a look real quick around the rest of the Southeastern campus and what's going on in Southeastern Athletics, the Lady Lions tonight in action against Central Arkansas. They're going to tip off at 7 o'clock as well. With a win tonight, Southeastern will secure a spot for the first time since 2012 in the Southland Conference Tournament. Now, honestly, fans, I think the I, I think that they may be in, but I'm still not really sure. Uh, there's still a lot of tiebreaker scenarios, but for, if they win tonight, for sure all that goes out of the uh, window. So, uh I don't want to confirm anything yet. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think the Lions have secured, the Lady Lions have secured, but we uh, I don't know that uh, as a fact just yet. But the Lions enter tonight in seventh place, a half game behind or in front of Nichols. Uh, Nichols comes in 12 and 16, 9 and 10 in the standings. So fans in the Hammond area can follow the game play by play live on 90.9 FM KSLU as Kimmler Chapel. We'll bringing you, be bringing you all the action. Also, congratulations to the Southeastern men's track team who captured the 2020 Indoor Championship Monday afternoon. It was the second indoor championship in men's uh, in school history for the men. Uh, they won it back in 2014 as the Lions compiled a two-day total of 99 points. Uh, both uh, James Benson and uh, Donovan, or excuse me, Jonathan Sawyer broke the Southland Indoor championship record in the 400 meter as uh, Sawyer set the best time in Southland Conference indoor history at 46.23. Uh, the distance medley team of Grant O'Callaghan, uh, Shea Foster, Gerald Coleman, and Anthony Cordero also set a school record in that race as well as they ran 10 minutes point 42 in route to the gold medal. So congratulations to them, the entire team. They will be honored during halftime of today's ball game as Coach Corey Mistretta will join me during halftime to talk about his team's remarkable week over in the conference championships. So uh, congratulations to him. Congratulations to Coach Mistretta. Another thing, uh, Coach Mistretta is uh, supportive of the rest of the programs on this campus as anybody has been publicly very supportive of this Southeastern men's team. So uh, this guy's just a lion through and through, and it's good to see him and his guys uh, get some big-time recognition this afternoon, or excuse me, this week for the conference. So uh, we'll hear from him during halftime of today's ball game. Also, real quick, the clear bag policy to increase public safety. Southeastern Athletics has instituted the clear bag policy for all ticketed athletic events. The policy mirrors the safety precautions taken upon entrance to professional and collegiate sporting venues throughout the country. More information about the new line clear policy is available at lionsports.net slash clear. Moving on across the uh, southeastern campus, the baseball team. Lions lost a tough one last night to 20th ranked LSU 6-3. They fell behind 6-1 after six innings. However, the Lions refused to quit as they brought the tying run to the plate in both the eighth and ninth innings, but were unable to get the big hits. Uh, Lions finished with three runs, seven hits, and one error. LSU, six runs, nine hits, and one error. Southeastern will open up Southland Conference play this weekend as they hit the road to take on this very team that the Lions are facing tonight, Central Arkansas. Those three games in Conway, Arkansas. They'll play Friday and Saturday at 6 o'clock and Sunday at 1 o'clock. Trey Schaefer, who slated to start Friday's game at UCA, been nearly untouchable. Junior from Biloxi, Mississippi, is 3-0 with a 1.15 ERA, allowing just six hits while striking out 23 and 15 and two-thirds innings pitch. Fans who want to get a chance to see this young man pitch as soon as possible. But uh, it's about time for us to tip this one off. We'll take our final break. It's National Anthem time here at the UC. When we come back, starting lineups and opening tip-off, from the University Center, this is Southeastern Men's Basketball right here on the Southeastern Sports Network. 
What do you love most about being a student athlete at Southeastern? So I chose Teammates for Life because on our golf team, nobody's from the same spot, but the friendships we've made once we graduate, we, I know we'll always be friends, we'll always see each other, we'll always come back and visit. The Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student athletes, achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are Welcome back to the University Center as it's just about time to tip this one off. I'm Chris Saleem. I want to thank you again for joining us for the Lions home finale. They'll wrap up the regular season Saturday night at the University of New Orleans at 6 o'clock. But it's time to meet the starting lineups for tonight's game brought to you by Roof Crafters. Roof Crafters specializes in commercial and residential roof replacement, store restoration, repairs, skylights, and more. Find out more online at theroofcrafters.com. So, line up for the Bears as they come in 10 and 19 overall, 9 and 9 in the Southland, and a three way tie for sixth place with Northwestern State and McNeese. And they'll line up this way at guard, a six foot six junior from Boise, Idaho, number one, Ryland Bergerson. At guard, a six foot seven sophomore from Paris, France, number 13, Eddie Cayulu. At center, a seven foot junior from Prosper, Texas. Number 15, Hayden Koval. At guard, a six foot seven freshman from Phoenix, Arizona, number 34, Jackson Baker. And at point guard, a five foot 11 junior from Boise, Idaho, number 55, DeAndre Jones. The Bears are head coached by interim head coach, Anthony Boone, assistant coaches, uh, Tyler Miller, Brock Widers, uh, Witters, and uh, Matt uh, Sherbinsky. Sherbinsky, beg your pardon, uh, Bears fans. So, Graduate assistant coach is John Cranford. Real quick tonight, uh, let's take a look at the standings coming in to tonight as Stephen F. Austin has clinched the Southland Conference as they defeated Abilene Christian last night, improving to 18-1 in the conference, 27-3 overall. Abilene Christian at 19-11, 14-5. Uh, both them and Nichols tied at 14-5. For that all-coveted number two seed in the double bye in the conference tournament, uh, Sam Houston at 18 and 11, 11 and 7 in the Southland. Lamar at 10 and 9, 16 and 14. Northwestern State 12 and 15 overall, 9 and 9 in the conference. Of course, Central Arkansas uh, 10 and 19, 9 and 9, and McNeese 14 and 15 and 9 and 9 at three-way tie for sixth place. We were just talking about and in Corpus Christi 12 and 17. And 10 and 10, uh, 8 and 10 in the conference. UIW at uh, 9 and 20, 6 and 12 in Southland play. Uh, UNO and Southeastern both at 4 and 14 in the conference, while Houston Baptist is 3 and 15, as just two games remaining in the regular season. Juan Julian's last home game for the Lions, and he has been a dandy fan. I don't think I could say enough. Good things about this young man who has, uh, for two years, just done everything this coaching staff has asked for and uh, uh, hopefully would like to see him go out on a high note and see this team go on a three-game winning streak to end the season. So um, one thing I know for sure tonight, this team's going to come out 
and play with max effort as though they're playing for the Southland Conference Tournament Championship. They may not uh, be going to the Southland Conference Tournament, but uh, they're going to play with as much pride and heart as anybody, and I expect them to be ready to go here tonight. So, just about ready. Southeastern in the home white. Bears in the road, purple. Tip will be between Koval and Brewer. Lions left to right, moving in the first half. I want to thank those of you watching on the Southeastern Sports Network YouTube channel. I'm Chris Salim, and the Lions control it. Julian to Gonzalez. The Lions starting off with their usual quality ball movement within the offense. Smith drives left side, layup put up, blocked out of bounds by Kaiulude. Good defense by Eddie Kaiulude, and the Lions will take it out with half of a shot clock to go. Julian. Out to Gonzalez. Gonzalez, nice left-handed layup put up. Rolls off the rim, no good. Rebound cleared by Baker. Baker to Kayalu. Cut off nicely by Brewer. And Jones will set it up for Central Arkansas. Near side, this one comes to Bergerson. Look like he traveled, and I think he did. No, they're going to get a call away from the basketball. I thought uh, Bergerson might have traveled as he tried to go behind the back with the pass, but they're going to get a foul called on Pop Jop away from the ball. First on him, first team foul. So this one to Jones. Jones, far side. Kyle lines a three up. That's off the iron, no good. Rebound. Gonzalez and the Lions have it. Julian attacks the basket, had it stripped away, knocked out of bounds, and it will stay with Southeastern. Nothing doing offensively. Almost a minute gone by here in the ball game, scoreless. Southeastern and Central Arkansas from the University Center in Hammond. Julian knocked away and stolen by Jones, but a reach-in foul is going to be called against Jones, and that will be his first. First team foul against the Bears. Gonzalez drops it in to Julian. Slow start to this one. Both teams getting after it offensively to Smith. Brewer, three from the wing. That's off the iron, no good. Rebound, Jones. Jones throws it away right to Brewer. Nice play by Ty Brewer. Julian, Smith from the wing. Three-pointer, no good. Cleared by Koval, and here comes the Bears. Jones, front court. Hands it off to Koval. Back to Jones. Jones, cut off at the elbow. Tough shot. Puts this one off the glass and good. DeAndre Jones banks it in with the first bucket of the ball game. 2-0 Central Arkansas. Gonzalez, top of the key. Hands it off to Brewer. Brewer, Smith to Gonzalez. Bears doing a good job of guarding the perimeter early in this one. Gonzalez fires the three. That is off the iron. No good. Rebound cleared by Kyle and He'll give it to Jones, and here come the Bears. Two minutes gone by. 2-0 lead for Central Arkansas. They float this one back door. Pretty pass from Jones to Koval, and it's 4 to nothing. Jones, or Julian, to Gonzalez. Back to Smith. Almost two and a half gone by. Line still haven't scored yet. Julian has it to Gonzalez. Gonzalez drives hard right side, puts this one off the glass. That one's no good. Rebound tipped out and controlled by Central Arkansas. And Bergerson will give it into the front court. Jones, far side three-pointer. Baker, no good. Rebound cleared. Tipped out of bounds off of the Bears. And it'll go back to Southeastern. 17-21 left in the first half. The Bears with an early 4 to nothing lead. Lions 0 for 6 from the field to start this one off. Julian. Gonzalez. Lions methodical in the offensive set. Gonzalez up top, guarded by Jones. This one to Brewer. Brewer reverses, lays this one up off the glass and good. Pretty move by Ty Brewer, the Lions' leading scorer. 15.1 a game, 7.8 rebounds as well as this one into the front court to Kyulud. To Baker. Back to Jones. 16.50 left in the half. 
4-2 Central Arkansas. I was expecting a little bit more of a high scoring game. Still a long way to go. Entry pass knocked away and stolen by Ty Brewer. Brewer to Julian. Julian bounces it over to Jop. Baseline drive. Goes up with it. Strong lays it up. No, they're going to say he walked. Good footwork by Jop, but maybe a little too good as he's called for shuffling his feet, and it'll go back to the Bears. Full court pressure knocked away and stolen again by Brewer. Brewer to Gonzalez. Gonzalez back to Julian. Over to Brewer. A couple of terrific defensive plays by Brewer. Fires a three from the wing. Money ball. Five to four, Southeastern. Jones, pressure. Gets it into the front court to Baker. Gives this one to Bergerson. Bergerson, a little 10 footer, knocks it down. Nicely done by Bergerson. Tell you what, you talk about smooth as silk as well. Rylan Bergerson, big pickup for the Bears. Three pointer, that's Brewer again. Short. This one will go out of bounds off of the Bears. That'll take us to the first media timeout. 15 55 left first in the first half. Southeastern uh, Trail, Central Arkansas, 6 to 5. Back in a moment, this is Southeastern men's basketball right here on the Southeastern Sports Network. The countdown to Katie has begun. The Southland Conference Basketball Tournament at the Merrill Center in Katy, Texas. Experience it live as Southland Strong teams compete for a tournament title and a chance to go to the dance. It's affordable family fun and great college hoops action. Tickets for the Southland Conference Basketball Tournament are on sale through school ticket offices and Ticketmaster.com. Welcome back. Southeastern with a basketball. Jumper by Julian. No good. Cleared by Central Arkansas. And Cayulude to Jones. Bears with a one-point lead. 6-5. Jones drives hard to the basket. Kicks it back out. Cayulude. Good ball movement in the corner. Three-pointer by Widenauer. No good. Offensive rebound put back up by SK Shitu. No good. Rebound cleared. Knocked out of bounds by Southeastern. Number zero, SK Shitu uh, into the ball game. Uh, Ford, a six foot nine sophomore from uh, Rogers, Arkansas, just into the game. And the Bears will take it out into their own basket. Also into the game, Aaron Widenauer, a uh, six foot seven senior from Bozemont, Montana. Top of the key, Jones. He'll take the jumper, free throw line, no good. Rebound cleared by the Lions. With well, a chance to take the lead, Brewer to Julian. Up top to Jop. Rhyme perfectly. That one to Gonzalez. 15 minutes left in the first half. Three pointer near side, Gonzalez. Three good. Very it. Money ball once again. Eight to six, Lions. Pressure in the back court by the Lions. Kyulud into the front court to Jones. Jones, backdoor pass, Burgesson, hammered, foul, no, whoa, no foul. Ball knocked out of bounds. I think the Central Arkansas bench has a point there. I thought that the Lions were basically trying to give the foul and uh, make uh, the Bears go to the free throw line, but nothing called. Lions will take the break. Kyulud to Jones. Jones takes the screen from Shitu, back far side to Kyulud. Well, I got to really be careful with uh, SK Shitu when I'm pronouncing his name. Pass goes far side, Jones, three pointer, wing, and that's in and out. Rebound tipped around. Widenauer comes away with it. Fresh shot clock for the Bears. This one dropped down low. Kyulu running, uh, running uh, floater is no good. It's out of bounds. So as it goes out of bounds off of SK. I think I'm going to just go with SK to be safe. 
Julian into the front court. He'll hand this one to Gonzalez. Back to Smith. Eight to six, Lions with the lead. Smith to Gonzalez. And we're going to get a foul away. Nope, going to be a three-second call. Lions call for three seconds. It'll go back over to the Bears as Maxwell Starwood will check in for Southeastern. Six foot nine, 230-pound forward from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He was terrific the other night. Scored 15 points in just 12 minutes. Six minutes gone by in the game. Lions lead by two, eight to six. Jones into the front court. Gets it to Bergerson. Near side, Widenauer. Good ball movement again by the Bears. Nothing wrong with the execution offensively by the Bears, just not knocking the shots down. They're getting good looks. Jones, baseline, good defense by the Lions. This one thrown down low to Bergerson, goes up with it, lays it up and in. Game tied at eight. Terrific vision by DeAndre Jones. My God. Can't believe how underrated he is. Gonzalez fires another three. No good. Rebound goes to Brewer, and the Lions reset. Brewer. Goes hard to the basket. Put, nope, knocked away. Gets it back. Comes back out with it to Jones. We're going to get a reach-in foul, though, against the Bears. So, this one's going against number 55. That is DeAndre Jones. Speaking of underrated and players that are getting better by the game, six foot seven freshman Nick Caldwell checking in. Six, Caldwell out of Geismer and... Future as bright as a shooting star for this young man. He could really be one of those guys. I'll tell you, he reminds me a lot, and I'll talk about him here in just a minute. This one comes into Julian, to Caldwell. Brewer drives right side. Going to get another reach-in foul. This one's going to be called against Cuyalude. Caldwell kind of reminds me just the way he plays, and obviously not to get carried away. Doesn't have obviously the same skill set, but Dirk Nowitzki comes to mind. His length, he can shoot it, he can block shots. Julian has the basketball, kicks it far side to Brewer. Brewer, back near side, Julian. Baseline jumper, no good. Rebound tipped up by Caldwell, gets it back. Loose ball, goes out of bounds off of Southeastern. Good second effort by Caldwell, unable, though, to secure it. And we'll go back to Central Arkansas. We're deadlocked at 8. 12.51 left in the first half. As Bergerson in the front court, drives hard, knocked away. Offensive foul by guess who? Nick Caldwell. Caldwell takes the charge right in the chest. We'll go the other way. Bergerson whistled for the offensive foul. Also into the game for Southeastern, number one, Jeremiah Saunders, 6'3", sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. On the floor for the Bears is number 34, Jared Chatham, or 24, Jared Chatham, forward, uh, six foot eight from Los Angeles. Game tied at eight, 12 and a half to go in the first half. Caldwell to Starwood. Starwood, Brewer. He'll back down on Kyulu, takes the baseline jumper and drills the baseline jumper. Silky smooth by the sophomore as the Lions regain a two point lead. Kyulu, back near side. To widen now. Pressure in the backcourt by Saunders, but able to get it into the front court of all the Bears. Lions doing an excellent job of not fouling in the backcourt. Even when they're not getting the turnovers, they're still making the Bears have to work and not really getting able, uh, not able to start their offense until 15 or 20 on the shot clock. Lay it put up, no good by Widenauer. And here come or uh Kyulud. Here comes the Lions. Julian lays this one up, puts it in, can't no offensive foul. Looked like Julian had the and one, but not so, says the official, as the Lions lead this one 10 to 8 at the under 12 media timeout. We'll take a break and come back. This is Southeastern men's basketball right here on the Southeastern Sports Network. The Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student athletes, achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are
Welcome back to the University Center. Southeastern with an early 10 to 8 lead with 11.51 to go. A little bit more low scoring than I was expecting, but uh, a lot of that credit goes to both defenses. Is uh, really uh, playing fundamentally sound on both uh, both ends, both teams defensively. So Widenauer has it. Good defense by Saunders. And Widenauer gets it to Kyulud, and the Bears will set up shop. Again, this is what I'm talking about, though, with the Lions in the uh, defense. I mean, they're just getting their offense started, the Central Arkansas. Law pass down low, knocked away by the Lions. It goes out of bounds off of Central Arkansas. 11-29 left here in the first half. I'm Chris Saleem, Southeastern and Central Arkansas. Southland Conference men's basketball. Brewer to Saunders. Saunders, oh, nice little fake, drives in, drops it off down low, Starwood lays it up, no good, but a foul going to be called. Pretty move by Saunders to set that up, and Starwood will go to the free throw line. The foul goes against Kyulu. that's number two on him. And Starwood steps to the line for a pair. Free throw up, free throw good. Not a big sample for uh, Starwood to uh, as far as the free throw line, but he's 11 of 15 from the free throw line for the season. That's 72%. Make that 11, uh, 12 of 16 now. Lions by four, 12 to eight. Kyulud knocked away by the Lions. It's in the hands of Caldwell. Caldwell lays it up. No good, but a foul. Good play. Looked like Julian got his hands on that one first, and Caldwell goes to the basket. And he'll go to the line as the foul is called against number one, SK Shatu. So Caldwell to the charity stripe, the freshman. First free throw. This one up, this one good. Caldwell shooting 69% from the free throw line, 32 out of 46. And lines will wrap up the regular season Saturday night at 6 against UNO. Central Arkansas in a three-way tie for sixth place in the Southland Conference tournament seedings as Caldwell knocks them both down. Lions in front by six as Vaughn Julian will check out. Byron Smith back in. Pass in bounds to Chatham. Chatham to Bergerson. Lob pass back door to Koval, and he slams it down. Pretty basketball in transition by the Bears. It's 14 to 10. Smith to Caldwell. Caldwell, Saunders. Lions getting in some rhythm offensively. Saunders fires a three. No good. Rebound. Koval comes away with it. And the Bears with a chance to make it a one-possession lead. Bergerson on the near side. Drives near side. Gets it in the corner. Widenauer for a three. Bang. Nothing but the bottom. Pretty shot by Widenauer. Good pass from Bergerson. And it's a one-point game, 14-13. Saunders, Caldwell, Southeastern has it. 10-20 left in the first half. Caldwell, top of the key, three. And this one, no good. Rebound cleared by the Bears and Chatham. Chatham to Kyulu. Kyulu attacks the basket, drops it down. Knocked away and stolen. Looked like Starwood got his hands on that one. And here come the Lions. Exactly halfway through the first half. This one, top of the key to Saunders. Saunders over to Smith. Smith, top of the key to Brewer. Fakes the three. He'll take the three, and this one is money. Ba boom. 17 13, 9 50 left. Boy, Brewer took a step back from the three point line, and he gets another steal. Brewer, Smith, money ball, corner. No. Rebound, tipped and fought for it. Goes out of bounds off of South. The stir. No, they're going to get a foul on Saunders. Hey, this is the size of this uh, Central Arkansas team. They got so tough to match up with as a couple of both Gonzalez and Joppel check back in. Saunders comes out as well as Brewer. So Ty Brewer with 10 points already in this one. 17-13, Lion pass into the front court. Bergerson, crossover dribble, takes the baseline jumper, and that's no good. Rebound tipped up, fought for, cleared by Caldwell. Nicely done by Southeastern. Smith 
Drops it off the job. Good pass down low to Starwood. He lays it up and in. Nice job on the interior. Job to Starwood. Lions take a six-point lead and a timeout call. Let's see, 30 or 60 seconds. It is a 30 second, so we'll stay right with this one. Lions with the 19 to 13 lead and are starting to really execute nicely on the offensive end. Both teams just with six field goals to this point. Lions 6 of 18, Central Arkansas 6 of 14. Lions 3 out of 10 from the three-point line and 4 for 4 from the free throw line. This is the one, uh, this stat here is the one the Lions going to want to keep as close as possible. They're probably not going to win the rebounding battle against Central Arkansas. They've got too much size. But if they can keep it within 3 to 4, right now it's 11 to 7 Bears. The Lions can keep this one to, you know, about a minus 2, minus 4 difference at most. Uh, that's going to Really give them a good chance to win this ball game. If, it, if things go like they did last time uh, at uh, Conway when it was uh, minus 17, it's going to be a long day, a long night, however you want to look at it. Back to action. Bergerson has it over to Kaiulu. 19-13 Southeastern, nine minutes to go in half. Over to Widenauer. Up top to Chatham. Kaiulu working on Smith. Into the corner to Kowal. That Koval, wide now, shot blocked by uh, Starwood. Starwood to Jop. Jop throws it away, but Caldwell able to come up with it. Back to Gonzalez, fakes the three, takes the three. Money ball, no, it's off the back iron, no good. That one looked great from here. Doesn't go, though. Kyulud into the front court. Six-point lead for Southeastern. Hills is dribbled, knocked away and stolen by Smith. It's going to be an easy run out for Smith, who slams it down. Lions by eight, 21 to 13. Good start to this game, especially on the defensive end for Southeastern. They're getting their hands on everything. Kyulu to Kobau. Over to Chatham. Ferguson has it. Top of the key. Right side drive. Drops it down low. Good pass down low to Kyulu. Pretty, 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 pretty. This kid, uh... Ryan, Ryland Bergerson, just what a fine this was for Central Arkansas. This young man is as smooth as anything. Top of the key, Gonzalez. Couldn't find a one-liner for smooth, as y'all could tell. Back over to Starwood. Starwood drops off to the uh, job, lays it up. This one off the back iron, no good. Rebound by Chatham, 21-15 Southeastern. Next dead ball will take us to the under-8 media timeout. Far side, Kajalu drives right side. He'll back down on Caldwell, gets it, Chatham, fires the three. That's going to be short. Rebound to Starwood. Starwood to Smith. Smith will tack the basket, lays this one up. No good. Tipped in, though, by Caldwell. Couldn't quite get it to go. Caldwell tried to slam it down. Wide now to Chatham. Chatham spins. Good move. Put this one up, and no good. Good contest by Starwood, and the Lions have it. 7.06 to go in the first half. 21-15 Southeastern. Caldwell, Gonzalez. Gonzalez drives left side, goes hard to the basket, lays this one up, uh, and a blocking foul called, and that'll take us to the media timeout as Gonzalez will shoot free throws after the under-8 media timeout. 21-15 Southeastern, 6.55 left in the first half. We'll have a Lady Lions update from Conway when we return. This is Southeastern men's basketball right here on the Southeastern Sports Network. What do you love most about being a student athlete at Southeastern? So I chose teammates for life because on our golf team, nobody's from the same spot, but the friendships we've made once we graduate, we, I know we'll always be friends, we'll always see each other, we'll always come back and visit.
Southeastern with the lead, 21-15, 6.55 to go in the first half as Brandon Gonzalez at the free throw line. Lions been terrific defensively as they've already got seven steals in the game. Gonzalez's first free throw coming, and this one rattles home. Second free throw coming for Gonzalez. This one rattles home as well. And the Lions will set up shop in the full court press. And the Lions just all over the place on the defensive end. Pass comes to Jones. Jones, a little floater from 10. In and out, no good. Rebound tipped in. And it goes back to Jones. Somehow comes away with it. Outside to Baker. He'll fire the three. And that's off the iron. No good. Rebound tipped up. And we're going to get a foul on loose ball on Brandon Gonzalez. That'll be Gonzalez's first. And the fourth team foul against the Lions. 23 to 15, our score. Ty Brewer leading the Lions with 10 points, five for Gonzalez. Lob pass down low, layup put up and good by Eddie Cayulu. Good entry pass there. Is this one uh, starting uh, to get uh, pretty good offensively? Both teams really were clamping down uh, defensively on each other early. Julian dribbles near side. Up top to Gonzalez. Gonzalez attacks the basket, drops it off for Jop. Jop in the lane, and we're going to get another three-second call against Jop. Jop got caught in no man's land there with nowhere to go with it, and the three-second call gives it back to the Bears. Not going to be a whole lot of opportunities in the paint against a team the size of Central Arkansas, but you got to do what the Lions are doing, and that's going uh, to continue to attack and try to get to the free throw line. So, pressure. This one comes into the front court. Chad and Brewer almost picked it off. This one back to Baker. Jones working near side. Six minutes left in the half. Lions by six. Jones spins in the lane to Cayulude. Corner three-pointer. No fake the three to Koval. And he'll go back up top to Jones with eight seconds to shoot. Jones, left side dribble. Spins. Drops this one off. Has it? No, partially tipped and blocked by Saunders, and that's going to do it for the shot clock as, well, I think Coach David Kiefer wanted the official to let the Lions play on, but ball was kind of 50-50 there, so if you're the Lions, you'll take it. I mean, might have been a layup on the other end, but Southeastern has it with a full shot clock after yet another steal. Julian, baseline drive. Goes underneath the basket, top of the key, Smith. Saunders fires a three from the wing. Oh, in there, wow, in and out. Ball was halfway down, and then a loose ball foul called against Southeastern and Pop Jop. Well, if that would have been a game-winning shot, I think I'd have had a stroke. The ball did everything but go in, and it'll go back to Central Arkansas. 23-17, Lions with the lead with five and a half to go. Kyulud checks out. Widen now, I believe, came back in. This one comes in, bounce, knocked away by Brewer, but Chatham comes away with it. Then they're going to get a foul on Brewer, and that'll be the 16th foul on the Lions. First on uh, Brewer. Brewer leading all scores in this one with 10 points. Ah, the update from Central Arkansas. Sorry, fans. The Lady Lions trail this that one. Let me see here. An update in the page. It was 15 13 five minutes ago in favor of Central Arkansas. It is still 15 13. 9 08 to go in the second quarter. Bears lead uh, the Lady Lions, or the Sugar Bears over the Lady Lions, should I say. So Jones has it in the front court. Southeastern leading 23 17 here. Jones drives in, and he's tripped up and fouled. And it's going to go against Southeastern and uh, number five, Byron Smith, the freshman from Palatka, Florida. That's the 17th foul against the Lions, which will put the Bears shooting the one and one. Front end of the one and one rolls in for Jones. DeAndre Jones on the season, averaging 13.1 points a game and six assists. Second free throw is good. And by the way, he's an 82% free throw shooter. 
Lions with it. Leading by four, 23-19. Julian fakes the jumper. Nowhere to go with it. Comes back to Smith. Five minutes to go. Drops down low to Starwood. Starwood, good up and under move. Lays it up, no good. Was well, good footwork and uh, everything right for Starwood. Just couldn't get it to go. And the Bears have it. 448 and counting in the half. 23-19, Southeastern. Chatham. Gips it near side. Widen hour. Comes back out to Jones, and the Lions will, or the uh, Bears will set this one up. Far side, Koval takes the three, and that's off the front iron, no good. Uh, loose ball fought for, and this one's going to go to the ground, and we're going to get a jump ball or a timeout. So, a timeout call. See, they're going to get a full, uh, but Central Arkansas does get the timeout. I thought I could even see from here that uh, Chatham was trying to uh, get the timeout called. It was actually uh, DeAndre Jones that ended up getting it. So that will take us to the media timeout, a little bit in front of the four-minute uh, media timeout. So that's going to be our final media timeout of the first half. Back in a moment, Southeastern leads 23-19. It's the Southeastern men's basketball on the Southeastern Sports Network. The Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student athletes, achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are Welcome back, Southeastern with the uh, 23 to 19 lead with 424 to go. Pass comes inbounds to Chatham. Bears with the basketball wide now. Ba Baker, that is, fires the three. That's no good. This one tipped up, and Lions have it as it's cleared by Stallwood. The Bears struggling from the three-point line here in the first half, just one of eight. Julian. Over to Brewer, to Smith. Neither team shooting it particularly well. Lob pass back door. The, the Brewer can't handle it. Gets it back, goes back up strong with it. No good. Offensive rebound tipped up. No good, but a foul called on Starwood. Yeah, neither team really shooting the lights out. Uh, Southeastern 7 of 26, while Central Arkansas is 8 of 24, and that's going to put Central Arkansas at the free throw line after the loose ball foul against Starwood. That's his first. Both teams over the foul limit. Southeastern with eight. Central Arkansas with seven. Chatham, free throw. Free throw up, free throw. Back iron no good. Front of the one and one missed, and Brewer clears it. Lions quickly into the front court. Smith to Saunders. Over to Julian. Julian, the screen from Starwood. Kicks it into the corner. Smith. Drives in, back out to Julian. Over to Smith. Smith drives in, kicks it far side to Saunders. Baseline lays this one up, blocked out of bounds by Chatham or Koval. Couldn't really tell who got their hands on that one. Koval leads the conference in blocked shots with 91, so there's a good chance it was probably him. And it'll be the Lions basketball with just six seconds on the shot clock. Julian. Gonzalez, Gonzalez, strong move, goes to the basket, lays it up and in. Nicely done by Brandon Gonzalez. Lions 25, Central Arkansas 19, 320 left in the half. Jones in the front court to Baker. Baker drives baseline, puts this one up. Offensive foul. They're going to get this one on Baker as he plowed into Brewer. 
And it'll be Baker's first. Don't forget, fans, will be joined by Southeastern men's track, uh, well, Southeastern track head coach uh, Corey Mistretta as he'll talk about the Lions Southland Conference men's indoor championship victory this past Tuesday or Monday as uh, he'll sit and talk with me for about five minutes during the break. And we're going to get a foul away from the ball, an offensive foul against Southeastern this time, and Vaughn Julian. So the uh, Lions uh, men's track team will be honored at halftime, and then we'll hear from Coach Mistretta as he'll take us back through the terrific two-day tournament. So Jones into the front court to Widenauer, over to Kowal. Three minutes to go in the half. Lions 25, Central Arkansas 19. Jones out near half court with 15 to shoot to Baker. Guarded by Caldwell. He'll give this one back to Koval. Drops this one off. Knocked away by Julian. And then it goes out of bounds, though. Boy, the Lions have been so active on the defensive end with, again, we seven steals already in this one as substitution brings. I think it was Saunders that came back in, and Julian goes out. To 43 left in the half. Lions 25, Central Arkansas 19. I want to thank all of you who are watching us on the Southeastern Sports Network YouTube. As Cobalt tried the inbounds pass, but there was nobody there. And it goes right to Smith. Smith to Brewer. Three-pointer corner over. Money ball. Two and a half to go. Lions by nine. 28 to 19 as we wind down on the first half. Jones, front court to Baker. And Jones will set the offense up. Lions really getting after it on the defensive end. Jones looking, skips it far side over to Widenauer. Widenauer to Jones. Eight to shoot. Baker down low to Koval. Koval lays the blocked out of bounds by Brewer. Nice play by Ty Brewer. Two minutes and a penny left in the half. Southeastern 28. Central Arkansas 19. Probably the best defensive half of the year for the Lions to this point. Referee having a word with Chatham and Caldwell as they're battling for position. Nothing more. And we're going to get a foul this time against Caldwell. Coach David Kiefer wondering why. Had a feeling that something was coming, though. The official that made the call was talking to both Caldwell and Chatham and felt like they were talking a little bit too much. And this Caldwell and Chatham still chatting back and forth. Love the competitive spirit out of both of those guys. Chatham's free throw rolls off the front iron and in gets the shooter's touch. So Kyle Little check in. Southeastern leads 28 to 20. It's going to be a fun matchup to watch the rest of the way. Let's see what uh, Kyle or uh, Chatham and Caldwell and how things uh, go with them. They're getting pretty physical down there. So, Chatham, free throw. Second one is no good. Rolls off the rim as Brewer clears it. And then what do we have? Brewer gets knocked out of bounds, and he hits the ground hard. And, oh, no. I think he's going to be okay. It's a loose ball foul, and that'll put Brewer at the line. I'm thinking that Ty Brewer says, no, coach, I'm fine, as they were trying to sub in for Brewer, and he's going to shoot free throws. That's just right there. I mean, you got two games left in the regular season, one and a half. Lions are playing this game like they're playing for a conference championship. They, <laughs> and you have to love and appreciate that. They are going to play all 31 games on their schedule. Um, like they're playing for the whole thing. Got the foul actually on uh, Caldwell, drew the foul, so he'll go to the free throw line, and he'll shoot one and one. Caldwell's first free throw. Nothing but net for the freshman. Update from Conway. Central Arkansas leads the Lady Lions 22-15 to 15 with 335 left in the first half. 159 to go here in the half. Lions by nine. Caldwell's second free throw is good. Make it 10. Largest lead of the ball game for Southeastern. 30 to 20. 
as it comes into the Bears. This one over to uh, Baker, to Jones, to Kayalu. Kayalu tacks the basket, shot put up, and hello, charge. And it'll go back the other way. Nicely done by Nick Caldwell. Central Arkansas head coach Anthony Boone not happy with the call. 50-50, I couldn't really give you honest, uh, I don't know. I mean, it looked like Caldwell did have the position, but I could certainly see Anthony Boone's point of view. Ten-point lead for the Lions. Southeastern by 10, 30 to 20 with 150 to go in the half. And really it's been the defense. I mean, they have gotten after it. And what do we have? I think we've got a clock issue. Nope, we have a Ty Brewer issue as I think he's still shaking up. So he's going to have to come off the floor after he went spilling into the uh, – After he went spilling to the floor a moment ago, I think it's just a thigh bruise, I hope. So he'll come off the floor, Starwood back in. And the Lions have it, leading by 10. So we'll check on that. I imagine we won't see Brewer for the rest of the half, but Lions have it with Gonzalez. Gonzalez drives hard right side, puts this one up. Off the glass and good over the seven-footer Koval. How on God's green earth did Gonzalez get that one over Koval? Knocked away and stolen by Gonzalez. And no, he can't save it from going out of bounds. 12-point lead for Southeastern, but I, I still have no idea how Gonzalez was able to get that one over Koval. Koval was in terrific defensive position to... But Gonzalez just made a better offensive move. 12-point lead for the Lions. 1.15 to go in the half. Lions shooting 10 of 30 from the field for 33%. Central Arkansas 8 out of 25. And let's see uh, what the holdup. Uh, discussion between Anthony Boone and the near side official. Wide now, inbounds it to Jones. Jones races it into the front court. This one will go down. Knocked away from behind, and it'll go out of bounds by Southeastern as Byron Smith there to block that one out of bounds as Chatham tried to lay it up and in. Lions just look a step quicker tonight than they have all year, and a foul away from the ball this time. It's going against Smith, and that'll put the Bears in the double bonus with a minute and – Change left in the half. 32 to 20, Southeastern with the lead. If you're just joining us, I'm Chris Saleem from the beautiful University Center in Hammond. For the final time this year, home finale for Southeastern. They'll go to UNO Saturday night at 7 to play at Lakefront Arena against Mark Schlesinger and the Privateers of New Orleans. Free throw up and no good for Jones. And that's a rarity. Again, Jones shooting 83% from the free throw line. Jones, second free throw, nothing but net. 32-21 Lions. As they will bring it into the front court. Near side to Saunders. As the Bears have switched to a 2-3 zone. Top of the key to Smith. Over to Gonzalez. Back to Smith. Saunders fakes the three, drives into the lane, cut off. Back up top to Smith, fakes it, goes in. Near side to Caldwell, fakes the three again. Terrific ball movement. Smith for three. Money ball. Boy, the Lions had that thing pinballing all around the perimeter, and they got the shot they wanted. That's spectacular ball movement, one that can certainly look at during film session. 14-point lead for Southeastern. 28 seconds to go. Chatham front court. Cut off. Looked like he might have traveled. Got away with it. Baker knocked away and stolen by Saunders. Saunders has it. Steal number nine for Southeastern here in the first half. And the shot clock is off. Lions can take the final shot of the half by far. The most crisp first half of the season for Southeastern. Even though they haven't shot it that well, defensively they have been everywhere. Gonzalez, three-pointer from the wing. No. Rebound cleared. Offensive rebound. Saunders lays it up. No, uh, It was blocked by Koval right before the final buzzer. So Koval blocks the shot. Lions take the commanding 35-21 lead 
into halftime. We'll take a break, come back, talk much more about a brilliant first half by Southeastern. This is Southeastern men's basketball right here on the Southeastern Sports Network. What do you love most about being a student athlete at Southeastern? So I chose teammates for life because on our golf team, nobody's from the same spot, but the friendships we've made once we graduate, we, I know we'll always be friends, we'll always see each other, we'll always come back and visit. Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student athletes, achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are Welcome back to the University Center. Halftime as the Lions lead this one and they're in command. 35 to 21. The Lions forced the Bears into, well, the Lions uh, got 10 steals and forced the Bears into 19. Make that, uh, excuse me, 14 first half turnovers. The Lions 11 out of 33 from the field. Uh, let's see. 13 points for Ty Brewer, 9 points for Brandon Gonzalez as the Lions have gotten 19 points off turnovers in the first half. We'll talk more about basketball here in a minute, but the man of the hour, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we talked about him a little bit in the pregame. His team honored just a moment ago during the halftime show, Southeastern head track coach, Corey Mistretta. Coach, how about this week for you, sir? Well, it was uh, <laughs> it was a grind, I tell you. Uh, it's gets pretty stressful at the at the championship meet. You know, um, we talked to the kids the night before the meet, and just to let them know that on, you know in championship meets crazy stuff happens, mm -hmm. and so we need to be ready tomorrow for some adversity, sure. and we need to be there for one another when it happens because it's going to happen. It's going to happen to our team. It's going to happen to the other teams as well. So we just need to be there for one another. And sure enough, um, we had about a 30-minute period there um, on the first day where it might have been the worst 30 minutes of, of my coaching career where the things just started spiraling out of control and you're just shaking your head and going, man, what's going on? Why can't we we stop this bleeding, right? And, sure. And um, we did, though, and then we ended the night with um, – 
with a, you know two school records in the DMR. And yes, this is my, the yeah. distance medley relay fans. Uh, two school records. I went. What, five for the weekend or something like yeah, that? Yeah, five school records for the weekend. And, uh, you know, the DMR, we ended. that. That's the last event on the first day. Mm -hmm. And so we ended on a high. And mm -hmm. so instead of leaving the facility and, um, and and going eat and then going to the hotel and having a meeting, a team meeting, I said, hey, let's have the meeting right now. Sure. So we stayed in. Everybody left the facility. We were the only team left in there. And we had our meeting right then. And, you know, and we said, hey, look. What did I tell y'all last night? It was going to happen. You know, we had some bad stuff happen today. But but we just ended on a very, very high note. And we qualified a lot of people for tomorrow. So let's just take care of business, use this energy that we got right now. And and they came out on uh, on Monday, and everybody stepped up. And it was, it was pretty special. So my question, Coach, for you is, okay, so Monday, okay, anytime you're playing for a championship or anytime, uh, you know, you're – you know, getting close to winning one or whatever, it's always the coach that's probably the last one to start celebrating. At what point during the day Monday did you start to tell yourself, okay, I think we got this thing. I mean, were, were you feeling pretty good? Any, was there a point before you actually clinched it where you said, hey, I think we're going to win this thing? Well, at about uh, 1.30 Monday morning, after I finished uh, <laughs> talking to all the kids and and uh, stressing out about what had happened that day. And, you know, you're, you're able to start looking at who you have qualified and what other teams have qualified, and you can kind of score the meet. Mm -hmm. And so at about 1.30 on Monday morning, I said, you know what? I, we got a really good shot. Mm -hmm. And so we just need, if we go and do everything we're supposed to, you know, good things can happen. So then we go to the meet on Monday, and some good stuff started happening. And, and um I think they had three events left to go, the triple jump, the, the 3,000 meters, and the 4x4. Four four. And the coach from Sam Houston came up to me and said, uh, hey, coach, I want to be the first one to shake your hand and congratulate you. Uh, we can't catch you. It's over. You guys are going to win. So he, he kind of conceded. Now, I didn't know if he was, you know, if that was a little gamesmanship <laughs> on his part or what. But, uh, yeah, it was about that time, about three or four events left. It looked like, you know, I knew we had um, Grant O'Callaghan, who's, who's our, our best distance runner. Sure. We had him left in the 3,000. Uh, we still had the 4x4 four four to go. So I felt really good about that time, and it, it started. Even the kids started started knowing. You know, to me, at least from when I was watching during the day Monday, it, when I saw both, when I saw uh, Jonathan Sawyer and James Benson do what they did, and of course just dominating the field in the 400 and take the one two, that to me is when I started looking around, going, "Hey, I think we." And I went to my boss, Campbell Chapel, of course, the head SID for Southeastern, and I was like, "Hey, look, I think, I think the guys are about to win this thing." He's like, "Are you sure? Make sure before you right. start running your mouth, Chris." And so at that point for me is when I said, "Okay, I think we have a chance," and then. About 30 minutes later, that's when he said, Chris, I think you're right. It looks like mathematically we've got it. So when you realized that, what was going through your mind once you realized y'all clinched it? Uh, you know, a little bit of relief because, like I said in the beginning, it, it's a grind. I mean, and it's it's really, really hard uh, to go out and win a championship. And uh, so we're stressful, and you, you almost can't even enjoy it. Um, because, like, with each event, you know, like, all we have to do is finish, right? So at the start of every event, the kids get in the blocks, and you're like, okay, just don't fall start. And then the gun goes off, and then you're like, okay, get around the track without falling down, right? Or pulling a muscle or doing something, right? So it's really, really stressful. And then that event ends, and you're like, okay, whew. And you can breathe a little bit, and you can kind of go coach the kids and, and you know, and, and, and you know, uh, encourage them and you know pat them on the back and that kind of stuff and then okay then the next events on the track and you're like sure. okay don't fall start okay and then please make it around the track and, and that kind of stuff so it's stressful all day long and but uh it was it was really good i mean the kids have um they, they've really poured their heart and soul into training and you know we came home with the runner-up trophy last year and uh red shirted a whole bunch of people outdoors and, and it was kind of embarrassing to go to the outdoor meet and, and yeah after coming being the, the conference runner up indoors and you go to the the conference meet outdoors and, and you can't even hardly score any points and even though we knew in the back of our head what we had done and so we were you know kind of ex expecting this year to be the outdoor season but sure. we added a couple of good pieces and the kids have been working really hard and then the, the early meets we went to all of a sudden some really good stuff started happening 
And so all of the kids started saying, hey, you, we might better do this thing indoors also. Mm -hmm. So they've been motivated and, and driven toward this goal uh, the whole season, and it's, it's just worked uh, It's worked really well. They, it's, it's all on them. You know, they we could put them in the right place and, mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. But you got to perform. You, yeah, well, you got to just train. And, and, and train, just come course. out and just watch them and train. And it's crazy some of the stuff that, that we ask them to do, and, and they do it. So. Well, listen, man, let me tell you, let me be the first to tell you, too. Not only, of course, with what you guys uh, and the girls, of course, did with the meet this past week, but something that I think may go unnoticed is your support for every other sport. And I think that's as much of what makes me happy for you is because you're diehard green. I mean, you're always tweeting about this baseball, softball, whatever it is, showing your support for the other sports. So to see you and your guys and girls have the weekend that they did, even though the girls didn't have the exact same finish, still a great weekend for them. Uh, I personally was very happy for you, man, and glad to see it's been this type of week for you. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. It's, uh, you know, it's it's not just, it's never about us, you know, and all the coaches, and we, we all work really, really, really hard, and so I know what it's like when, when you know, guys are working hard and coaching their tails off, and, and, and an event might not go a game or a match might not go the way they wanted, sure. and so I always want to be encouraging to not only them, but to their, their players also, and because it's it's one team really right we, we all have a bunch of individual things that we do but but it's one southeastern and and um, you know jay does a great job of of instilling that mentality in us and you know i truly appreciate him giving me this opportunity and we're gonna continue doing that and hopefully we can you know keep this thing rolling for a while last question before i let you go it has nothing to do with track or southeastern whatsoever i'm putting you on the spot here oh other than track other than southeastern athletics as a whole coach Corey mistretta enjoys what on his free time oh man um I would probably say golf. Um, okay. I, I like to joke and say uh, when I talk to people about playing golf, and, you know, I love it. I really love the game. And people say, do you play a lot? And I say uh, the joke, I, I always respond the same way. I say, well, I play as often as possible. Unfortunately, often isn't usually possible, <laughs> right? Because we just work so much. I mean, you, got, sure. you know how much we work. And, uh, but as of uh, just a month ago, I have a new grandbaby. So Yes, sir. I, I, I forgot about yeah, that. Yes, I, indeed. I, I think that's going to be taking up a lot of my time. So I'm, I'm really, really excited about that and, and proud of my son and daughter-in-law for for adopting this baby and um, it was a it was a crazy surprise for us um, they, they've been going through this process for two years and didn't tell anybody about it wow so um, it is it's awesome I'm very proud of them and uh, for doing this and they just felt called to to adopt a baby and so they got a little son and um, it's gonna be fun being a granddad man well that's awesome well look me and you could sit here for another half hour but we're about to get the second half started congratulations again coach Corey Mistretta Thanks second so much. Uh, school uh, men's indoor uh, Southland Conference championship in school history wish you the best of luck in the outdoor season my friend appreciate it Thanks ladies so much. and gentlemen southeastern uh, track head coach Corey Mistretta we'll take a break we'll come back with the start of the second half Lions lead 35-21, this is Southeastern Basketball on the Southeastern Sports Network. The Southland Conference, 13 member institutions, over 4,200 student athletes, achieving success in the classroom while excelling in 19 NCAA Division I sports and making a difference through serving others and giving back to the community. Determination, hard work, commitment, excellence, and collaboration. Together, we are Back fans just about ready to start the second half. For those of you just joining us or for those of you that have been with us through all of halftime, that was Southeastern track head coach Corey Mistretta as uh, the men's uh, track team uh, winning the Southland Conference Indoor Championship Monday afternoon in uh, Conway. So congratulations, or excuse me, in Birmingham. So congratulations to them. Real quick before we start the second half, 
Well, box score for the first half. Uh, Central Arkansas shot 8 of 25 from the field for 32%, 1 of 8 from the three-point line, 4 of 7 from free throw. Uh, they out-rebounded the Lions 21 to 16, but they had 14 turnovers that the Lions turned into 19 points. Uh, five points for DeAndre Jones led the way for Central Arkansas. Four points each for Eddie Kajulud, Hayden Koval, and uh, Rylan Bergerson. And uh, let's see. Uh, Bergerson also got whistled for three fouls in the first half. The Bears' leading score for Southeastern. Ty Brewer with 13 points, nine for Brandon Gonzalez, five for Byron Smith, four for Maxwell Starwood, and four for Nick Caldwell. Lions with 11 of 33 from the field, five of 15 from the three-point line. Perfect at the free throw line, eight out of eight. Lions with just seven turnovers, uh, had three assists, and uh, – Ten fouls, though, so they've got some guys with foul trouble, too. Two for Pop Jop, Byron Smith, and uh, Vaughn Julian. But other than that, Lions okay. So we're ready to start the second half. Jones with the basketball for Central Arkansas as the Lions have a 14-point lead. Jones, top of the key. Very methodical on the opening possession. Jones, crossover. He'll fire the three. That's tipped and blocked by Smith, but it goes to Kyulud. Back to Jones. Three again. No good. Rebound cleared by Gonzalez. Good defensive possession to start the second half for the Lions. Smith. Gonzalez. Lions with a 14-point lead. Just underway in the second half. 35-21. Julian to Brewer. Brewer the three from the wing. Money! Make it a 17-point lead, 38-21. Baker down low to Koval. Koval lost it back to Baker. Oh, offensive rebound, though, puts it up and in. So, back to 15, 38-23. Brewer fires a three again. Back the back iron, no good. Smith with the offensive rebound. Smith to the basket, lays this one up. No good, but a foul going to be called. I believe this one's going on Koval. That is his first. 18.50 left in the game, and the Lions probably, even though the offensive number's not as good as they were uh, Saturday, this was probably the most complete game they've played to this point this year. Uh, first free throw, no good for Smith. First missed free throw of the game for the Lions. Second free throw, Smith up, Smith good. Smith with six points on the game and a couple of assists as the Lions trap. And Jones able to get it into the front court. This might be an easy one on the other end. Layup put up by Bergerson. No good, but a foul called on Pop Jop. Jop almost got the charge, which would have been disastrous for the Bears as Bergerson's fourth foul was hanging in the balance, but he gets the benefit of the 50-50 call and... Blocking foul goes against Pop Jop. That is three on Jop. Bergerson's free throw, and the first one is up. Rolls in and out, no good. 39-23, Southeastern with a lead. A minute gone by here in the first half. Bergerson, second free throw, nothing but net. Back to 15, 39-24, Lions. Smith, near side wing. They'll give it back to Gonzalez. Gonzalez to Julian. Julian, looking back door. He'll dribble it right side. Goes right at Koval, then skips it back to Gonzalez. The three-pointer from the wing. Front iron, no good. Rebound tipped up. Loose ball cleared into the hands of Kayulud. Kayulud attacks the basket, goes in and lays it up. Boy, pretty Euro step move by Kayulud and gets the left-handed layup. The big man with good footwork that time. Gonzalez, top of the key over to Smith. Kyulud, 6'7", 220 pounds, and we're going to get a foul away from the basketball. A moving screen called against Pop Jop. That's four on Jop, and he'll have to come out of the game. Tough night thus far for Jop as he's got four fouls and has not scored yet. But Caldwell will check in for Southeastern. Caldwell in 10 minutes has got four points, uh, one assist and one rebound. Lions lead this one by a Baker's dozen, 39 to 26. Jones will walk it into the front court. 
Good pressure by Brewer and Smith trying to get it down low to Koval. Koval, lob down low, knocked away and stolen by Caldwell. Great job by Caldwell as he fronted the big man. Gonzalez near side three. He is in and out, no good. Cleared by Baker. Oh, a good look by Gonzalez. That one went halfway down. Jones drives right side layup. No good. Or he skips it out to Kayalu. Good find by Jones. Jones, Baker, three. Good. Nope, front iron, no good. I need to stop trying to call these before they go in. Julian, hard to the basket. Stops his dribble. Out to Brewer. Brewer fires a three from the wing. Money! Brewer is on fire from beyond the arc. That's five for Ty Brewer. That's a career high. In three pointers. This one into the front court to Bergerson. Uh oh, Brewer. Uh, Brewer's hurt again. Koval goes up strong with it, and a foul going to be called on Nick Caldwell. And that is big, big trouble for Southeastern that both Brewer and Jop are going to be out of the game. I hope uh, it's just maybe a uh, maybe cramp or a thigh bruise for Brewer. I don't know. But Starwood going to come in, so that's going to put both. Starting forwards for Southeastern on the bench. Jop with four fouls and Brewer with the injury to the leg. First free throw is good for Koval. Brewer 7 of 11 from the field for 19 points, but leg injury is starting to hamper him a little bit as he has to check out. Second free throw, Koval. This one is nothing but net. 42-28 Southeastern. 17 minutes left in the game. Julian to the top of the key. Skips it over to Gonzalez. Three from the wing. Good! Another three-pointer for Southeastern as that's nine. And it's knocked away and stolen by Julian. Julian to Smith. Smith drops it off. Gonzalez lays it up and in. And it's a 19-point lead for Southeastern, their biggest of the ball game. 47-28. to Steal number 12 for Southeastern. Kyulu to Bergerson. Bergerson. Right side layup. Put up off the glass. It's no good. Cleared by Byron Smith. Smith races it the other way. Lays this one up. Lays, nope. Offensive. Nope. Rebound cleared. It's cleared by UCA. Jones skips it over to Kyulu. He fires the three from the wing. That's short. Rebound comes to Starwood, but Star, nope. Starwood never got to it. Offensive rebound. Koval shot blocked from behind by Smith. Coach David Kiefer hollering at Starwood. Uh, look like, I'm not sure what happened there, but nonetheless, that takes us to the first media timeout of the second half. Lions in control, leading 47 to 28 with 15, 40, uh, 57 left in the game. Back in a moment, this is Southeastern men's basketball on the Southeastern Sports Network. Welcome back to the University Center as the Lions just been spectacular on the defensive end with 12 steals. And they have a 19-point lead, 47-28. to 28, But uh, Hayden Koval at the free throw line for the Bears. Free throw is up, and it is good for Hayden Koval. So Koval shooting, second free throw for him. This one is up, and this one rolls in for the junior. A seven-foot junior, 
Leading the conference in block shots, and you can see why. Very long, very difficult to shoot over. 47-30 Southeastern. Smith, top of the key. And we're going to get a foul on Southeastern away from the basketball. This one goes against Gonzalez. That's number two on him. Let me grab my record book, fans, and see about the, the steals, what the all-time record is, because this is unbelievable what the Lions are doing defensively. DeAndre, 12 already in this game. DeAndre Jones to Koval. Guarded by Starwood. Koval, good defense again by Starwood. Is this one knocked away and stolen again? It's by Caldwell this time. 13 steals and counting for the Lions. 47 to 30. Julian hands it to Saunders. Saunders to Gonzalez. To Starwood. He'll fire the three. Yes, sir! It's a 20-point game in favor of the Lions. Max Starwood has it. Jones lobs it back door. Koval drops it in for the easy alley-oop dunk. 50 to 32. Southeastern with nine three-pointers on the game, nine of 22. Saunders over to Gonzalez. Lions by 18, 50 to 32 with 14 and a half remaining. Gonzalez drives right side, had it knocked away, it had his pocket picked by Widenauer. Widenauer drops it off to Caillou, lays it up, and then 50 to 34, Southeastern. Julian took him to Caldwell, lines now with numbers. Caldwell attacks, goes hard to the basket, lays it up, and in. Caldwell took it right into the chest of Koval, and... The Lions back in front by 18. Widenauer inbounds it to Koval. And he'll give it to Jones. 14 minutes to go in the game. Lions by 18. Koval drops it off down low to Caillou. Caillou lays it up and in. And they're going to get shot that went in anyway. But they got Caldwell for goaltending. And it's back to 16. Lions 52. Central Arkansas 36. Bears just one of 11 from the three-point line, but it's the Lions' defense. 13 steals in this ball game. Caldwell, during the next media timeout, I need to look it up and see what the all-time record is. Julian dribbles to the near side, back to Saunders. 13 and a half to go. Backdoor pass, and, and uh, Gonzalez just threw that one away, airmailed Saunders. Probably have been able to get that one if Koval was on his team, but Saunders just 6'3", not 7 foot. And then a travel called on the inbounds pass as Widenauer. Since it was a dead ball, Widenauer has to stay put. And Widenauer tried to run the baseline, so he gets called for the travel. Nick Caldwell checks out. Ty Brewer back in. So I'm imagining it's just cramps for call, uh, for Brewer. Dumper by Saunders, no good. Tipped in by Starwood. What a play by Max Starwood. 54-36. Jones on the run out. He'll lay this one up and in over the outstretched arms of Starwood. Back to 16. This is turning into a little bit of a track meet here in the second half. 54-38 Southeastern. Julian to Saunders. Saunders back to Gonzalez. Gonzalez, top of the key, drives left side, lays this one up, had it blocked from behind by Bergerson. Nice play by Bergerson. Tell you what's scary about this Central Arkansas team, Koval, Bergerson, and Jones, all juniors. So <laughs> there's a lot of reason for Central Arkansas and their fans to be optimistic moving forward with this team. I mean, <laughs> there's three guys right there that will possibly be first and second team all-conference this year. We'll see how that goes. Starwood baseline jumper. Yep. Knocks it down. Max Starwood drills it. It's back to 18. 56-38. That's 11 for Starwood. Timeout called. Let's see. Are we going full or media timeout? So, yep, we are going to go ahead and go to a media timeout. Southeastern 56, Central Arkansas 38. Back in a moment, this is Southeastern men's basketball on the Southeastern Sports Network.
Welcome back. 12.58 to go in the game. Lions lead this one by 18, 56-38. Central Arkansas with the basketball. Kyle has it in the front court. Gives it to Jones again. So during the break, I did find out the 13 steals for the Lions is terrific, but still a ways to go to set the all-time record. Cole Ball, three-pointer, top of the key. That's in and out, no good. Tipped up, and it goes to Coyulude. Offensive rebound, puts it up. Tipped, and it's cleared by Brewer. Lions' all-time steals is 21 back in the 93-94 season against LSU Shreveport. So maybe not, won't get there, but still a terrific performance defensively. Gonzalez drives left side, kicks it near side corner. Uh, Julian, and now we're going to get an offensive foul. Gonzalez whistle for the charge. That's three on him. 14 points, though, for Gonzalez, who continues his torrid stretch. The junior with 69 points coming into today, the last three ball games. Scoring career highs in all three games. The inbounds pass almost thrown away, but Jones able to save it as he's got it in the backcourt. This one comes to Coyulude. Coyulude, front court, kills his dribble. Back door to Jones. Jones, face uh, free throw line jumper, knocks it down. Tell you what, if DeAndre Jones was 6'3", he'd be playing in the ACC. But because he's 5'7", 5'10", whatever they have him listed at, he's playing uh, in a, at a smaller school, playing in our, you know. It's just a basketball player. Gonzalez, not to go uh, John Gruden on you guys. Starwood, right-handed layup, put up off the glass, no good. Rebound cleared by Widenauer. 56-40, Lions with the lead, and Jones brings it into the front court. Crossover dribble, nice move. Right-handed layup, put up, no good, charge. We're going the other way. Starwood takes that one right in the chest. And that'll take us. Back to the media timeout. So they went full timeout a moment ago. Thought they called it for the media. Guess we'll take back-to-back -back breaks. 56-40 Southeastern with the lead. 11.25 to go in the ball game. Back in a moment. This is Southeastern basketball on the Southeastern Sports Network. Welcome back, fans. Southeastern in control of this one, leading 56 to 40 with 11.25 to go in the game as it's been a defensive clinic for the Lions. 13 steals and counting. Julian with it. Lions just methodically on both ends of the floor doing work tonight. Shot clock at eight. Julian hands it to Caldwell. Lions need to go on the attack pretty quick. Five seconds to shoot. Gonzalez, this one tipped away and stolen by Bergerson. Sloppy possession by Southeastern. Jones, front court. Gives this one to Bergerson. Back to Jones. He'll drive into the lane. Drops it off to Kayulu. Left-handed layup. Put up. No good. Offensive rebound. Kayulu. Layup. Put up and good. Eddie Kayulu certainly not playing the score in this ball game. He wants to get back in the game as quick as possible as he continues to get second effort points for the Bears. 56-42, Julian to Caldwell. Caldwell, Gonzalez, backdoor pass. Caldwell lays it up with a shot blocked by uh, Jones, but a foul called. So Star make that uh, Caldwell to the free throw line. Score update from Conway. Central Arkansas leads your Lady Lions 35-31 with a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. 
here at the UC, Southeastern 56, Central Arkansas 42. Lions led this one by as much as 20 here in the second half. Caldwell with six points on the night. Free throw up, make it seven for the freshman. He's five out of five from the free throw line as Jones checks out and Koval checks in. Final home game of the season for Southeastern, and they are playing this one like they want to go out in style, that's for sure. So Smith going to check back in for Southeastern. Free throw up. Off the back iron, no good. I right, call. Well, Lions still lead by 15, 57-42. Cayulud in the front court to Chatham. Back to Cayulud. Eddie Cayulud going to set the offense up. Over to Chatham. Aiden Cobal back to Cayulud. Baker working far side wing. They're going to try to get this one down low to Cobal. Koval lobs it, then they get a foul. Nope. Yeah, an offensive foul called against Hayden Koval on the entry pass. Didn't see exactly what they got him for, but a foul called nonetheless. That's number, I guess just the first on Koval. No, second. Ten points for Koval. Two fouls. Exactly ten minutes left in the game. Lions by 15. Pressure in the backcourt. Julian to Smith. And Lions break it easily, and they'll set the offense up. Smith to Caldwell. Back out to Julian. Caldwell, three-pointer way downtown. No good. Rebound is cleared by the Bears and Cayulud. Oh, Cayulud having a terrific ball game. This one crossover dribble by Bergerson. Puts a shot up. No good, but a foul going to be called against the Lions and Caldwell. That's Three on Nick Caldwell. Kalyalu with 12 points and eight rebounds. Well on his way to a double-double with Bergerson. Free throw up. This one is good. So Bergerson uh, with six points. Second free throw is good as well, and it's back to 13, 57-44. So the Bears have actually trimmed into the halftime lead. The Lions had a 14-point lead at the half. Caldwell to Brewer. Brewer back to Julian. Julian to the far side. Drops it off to Starwood. Starwood takes the elbow jumper. That one's well short, but then the rebound is cleared by Bergerson and... Got to be careful if you're the Lions. Lob pass back door. Koval shot put up. Blocked by Starwood. What a play by Max Starwood. Starwood to Smith. Smith front court. And Smith will back it out as Smith and Starwood collided. Smith's face said it all. <laughs> and the Lions will set up shot with 15 seconds on the shot clock. Julian, screen from Starwood. Looking, oh, good pass to Starwood. Lays it up. No, and good. Thought he was going to get the end one, but he didn't. And it's a 15-point game, 59-44. Kyulu has it. Kyulu keeping the Bears in the ball game. Chatham fakes the three, drives in, skips it far side. Bergerson, good ball movement. Baker fires the three. That's off the iron, no good. Another offensive rebound for Eddie Kyulu. And what do we have? Shot clock, uh, I think the shot clock stalled out. 8.14 left in the game, so they're going to switch the shot clock from 20 to 17. Lions with a 15-point lead, 59-44. Pop Jop going to check back in. Jop with four fouls, so he's going to have to be careful. Starwood will come out. Max Starwood, in just 19 minutes, he's got 13 points. He's been about as efficient as you can ask the last two games. Now what? Oh, okay, Smith, had his, Smith was tying his shoes, uh, and the official didn't see it, so they'll take it on, out again on the far side. Joe so Baker will inbound it to Bergerson. Eight minutes and change to go in this one. Lions by 15, 59-44. Bergerson, crossover, good defense by Caldwell, and... Now going to be called against Byron Smith. That is four on Byron Smith. That puts the Bears back at the free throw line. Boy, everybody in 
little trouble, it seems like, now in this ball game as uh, both four fouls for Jop, four for Byron Smith for Southeastern. For Central Arkansas, let's see. Four for SK two three for uh, Bergerson, and three for Kayulu. First free throw of the one and one is good for Chatham. 59-45 Southeastern. Over in Conway, Central Arkansas leads the Lady Lions 39-33. Start of the fourth quarter. Second free throw, nothing but net for Chatham. Pressure in the backcourt as Julian gets it over to Brewer. And the pressure broken. Lions will back it out and set the offense up with a 13-point lead. Next dead ball takes us to the under-eight media timeout. To Caldwell. Over to Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Takes the screen, fakes the three, looking down low. Gets it to Jop. Jop backs down on cold ball, lays up. No good. Tipped up, no good. Rebound cleared by Baker. And the Bears kind of hanging around in this one. And this kind of ha has a weird feel. You know, Lions had a 20-point lead, and uh, yet it's still only a 13-point game. Ferguson up top, uh, near side to Kyulude. Kyulude. We'll fire the three from the wing. That's no good. Rebound cleared by Ty Brewer. And Lions have it. 59-46 Southeastern. 7-10 to go as Southeastern looking for back-to-back -back wins for the first time this year, Julian. And it to Caldwell. Caldwell back up top to Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Up top to Caldwell, seven to shoot. Good pass down low to Jop, lays it up. No good, but a foul called on the floor. Or foul or layup was good, but a foul was called against Koval, and that is number three on him. That takes us to the under eight media timeout, 59-46 Southeastern. We're back in a moment. This is Southeastern basketball right here on the Southeastern Sports Network. Welcome back, 6.53 to go in the game. Lions by 13, 6, uh, 59, 46. As the Lions have the basketball and looking for back-to-back -back victories after their 95-92 win Saturday, and they lead now today in more of a defensive game. Julian to Caldwell, Southeastern has it. Gonzalez out near the half-court circle. Gonzalez, crossover dribble, goes hard to the basket. Left-handed layup, wild one, no good. Shot is cleared, and up ahead to Bergerson is Central Arkansas. Bergerson, baseline drive, cut off by Gonzalez. Oh, no, wide open to Chatham. He was left open for the layup, and the 20-point lead is down to 11 as Central Arkansas not going away in this one, and they're not going to, fans. They, had, they were down as many as 19 against Abilene Christian and trimmed it to three. Uh, Saturday, and here they are in this one. So, Lions definitely don't want to take their foot off the gas. Brewer, charge. Brewer, call for the charge. That is two on him. And it'll go. Excuse me, fans. It'll go back to the Bears with a chance to trim it to single digits for the first time since early in the first half. 59-48, Lions with the lead, six minutes exactly to go. DeAndre Jones back in the game. 
It was near side. Over to Koval. Koval far side to Bergerson. Gets it down. Koval layup. No, knocked away, and it goes out of bounds. Off of Southeastern with 18 seconds to shoot. I couldn't really see what happened there. Couldn't tell if he just lost it, if he got it knocked away. Uh, but unless it'll be Bears basketball. This will come to Koval. Koval suffocated by Starwood and a blocking foul called on Starwood. And that's a double bonus for Central Arkansas as Koval to the free throw line. Last thing the Lions want right now is the Bears getting points with the, the clock stopped. And that's exactly what Koval has a chance to do here with 546 remaining. 59-48 Lions. Free throw up for Koval. Uh, nothing but net. Or Koval, as pretty of a free throw stroke as anybody I've seen in the league to this point. Second free throw off the front iron, no good. Lions keep the double-digit lead, 59-48, but the Bears methodically cutting that 20-point lead in half. Gonzalez over to Caldwell, back to Julian, 5.33 left in the game. Julian down low to Caldwell. Caldwell drops it off to Starwood, and Starwood lost it out of bounds. So the Lions have kind of gone stagnant on the offensive end, and that's allowed the Bears to get back in this ball game, and there's still plenty of time left if the Bears are going to get the comeback. But it's been another good learning curve for Southeastern and this slew of freshmen that they have. Inbounds pass comes to Chatham. Chatham to Jones. 59-49, Lions with a 10-point lead. As we come up on five minutes to go. This one will go to Koval. Koval over to Bergerson. Bergerson to Chatham. Free throw line jumper. This one is good, and it's down to eight. 59-51, Southeastern as they need a basket here. Julian into the front court to Starwood. Starwood to Caldwell. Lions just need to keep attacking right now. There's too much time left in this game to think about holding or anything like that. I mean, still old. 440 left. Gonzalez drives in. Left-handed layup put up no good. Tipped and it's cleared into the hands of the Bears. Jones drops it to Burgess and layup put up no good. Knocked out of bounds off of the leg of Bergerson. So Bergerson. Had it knocked off of his leg, and it'll go back to Southeastern as the Lions have the eight-point lead in the basketball, but they need a basket because the Bears are getting back into this game and doing so methodically. Brewer had it off the, go off the foot of Baker, and it'll stay with Southeastern with 4.28 left. Lions 59, Bears 51. I was anticipating a high-scoring ball game, fans. It has not gone that way, but... As long as the Lions end up with more points, that's all that matters at the end of the day. But we'll see. Caldwell up top to Gonzalez. Gonzalez over to Starwood. Three-pointer from the wing. No good. Rebound cleared by Jones. And here comes the Bears to Bergerson to Cobile. Layup. Good. Bound to six. 20-point lead down to six, and it has just been so, it's been very slow, but it has been efficient, and uh, it'll take us to the timeout, and the Lions trail 59-50, or lead 59-53 with 3.56 left in the ball game. Hopefully the Lions can hang on to this one. We'll take a break and come back. This is Southeastern Men's Basketball on the Southeastern Sports Network.
20 point lead for the Lions is now down to six. They were up 50 to 30 early in the second half and it is a 59-53 lead for the Lions as they have the basketball. This one comes to Starwood. Starwood backing down, goes up and under, lays it up and shot is a, it's good goaltending and the Lions get the bucket. That's a big play by Maxwell Starwood as Koval tried to take the charge. 61-53 in favor of the Lions. That is the third personal against Koval. Aaron Smith is going to check in momentarily. I believe he's coming in for Caldwell. Or is it Gonzalez? Okay, Gonzalez comes out. So Baker, the inbound. Lions set up their pressure in the full court. Chatham back to Jones and Jones. Trying to get it across half court and does over to Chatham, to Baker. Baker attacks the basket, skips it over to Bergerson. Bergerson, Baker, fires the three. No, back iron, no good. Rebound, fought for, and a jump ball, and that's going to give it back to Southeastern. Great play by Smith, and the Lions will get it back. 3.33 left in the game. Southeastern 61, Bears 53. So on the floor for Southeastern and probably going to be this crew the rest of the way, Julian Brewer, Caldwell, Starwood, and Gonzalez. Brewer will bring it into the front court and gives it to Julian. And a foul called on DeAndre Jones as a lot of contact between Jones and Julian. Julian and Jones having a little fun and some words tell you what and I mean a lot of people can look at this and have their opinions but between Jones and Julian and then earlier in the game with uh, Caldwell and uh, I believe it was Chatham uh, that were kind of chatting it up a little bit I love that part I mean it's just competitive nature from both teams and I don't see a harm in either one 61 53 321 to go in the game Lions with the lead Gonzalez gives it in to Smith. Boy, bucket right here would go a long way for the Lions. Gonzalez over to Julian with 12 to shoot. Gonzalez fakes the three, drives hard into the lane, went off his leg. Son of a gun. Oof. So Gonzalez turns it over and it goes back to the Bears as Caldwell will come right back in and Smith will come out. Excuse me, Smith comes back in. Gonzalez comes out. Caldwell stays in. And out. Reach in foul on Ty Brewer. And that's going to put Bergerson at the free throw line for the double bonus. 3.07 left. The Lions lead 61 to 53. And I'll tell you, for 30 minutes, the Lions are as good as they've been all year. But over the last seven or so minutes, uh, kind of gotten a little laxed on the offensive end. Tell you, the Lions track team, uh, which was honored during halftime, having a lot of fun with Central Arkansas right behind me. But uh, right now the Bears kind of the ones having fun as uh, they've cut a 20-point lead down to seven, and there's plenty of time left in this game. Ferguson, second free throw coming, 61-54. That one off the back iron, no good. Tipped, and it's going to be saved. Uh, no, out of bounds off of Bergerson. So, second free throw missed, and that was a big one as it, it remains a three-possession game, 61-54. Southeastern with three minutes and four seconds to go. Julian to Brewer. Brewer into the front court. They'll give it back out to Julian. Lions will shoot free throws from here on out as the Bears with 16 fouls. Lions kind of been standing around too much right now this last couple possessions. They've got to... Uh, you know, keep running their offense. There's too much time left. Julian, going to let the shot clock run down with five seconds, with four, with three. Julian going to have to create. This one that is going to go off the glass and good as the shot clock expires. Oh, goodness. A busted play that worked out great. Nine-point lead. A lot pass back to Koval and then a push against Starwood, and that will put Koval at the free throw line. Oh, what a big shot by Vaughn Julian as he banked it in as the shot clock expired to make it a nine-point lead for Southeastern. But Koval back to the free throw line. 
Uh oh, news to report in uh, Conway. UCA leads Southeastern 49 39 in the women's game with 4 11 left in that one. Widenauer checks back in for Central Arkansas while Jackson Baker checks out. First free throw was good for Koval. Second free throw, Koval knocks it down. It's back to seven, but it is a three possession game. Julian gets it to Brewer. Brewer will bring it into the front court. And Brewer going to get it back out to Julian, and he's the one that you want to have the basketball if you're Southeastern. Still want to run the offense, though. I mean, again, we don't want necessarily what we had last time. It worked out great, but see if the Lions can get a little bit better shot. Gonzalez lobs it back door, throws it away. It's into the hands of Bergerson, and here come the Bears, trailing by seven. Kaya Lou, reach in, foul against uh, Todd Brewer. And that's the fourth foul against Brewer. And back to the free throw line go the Bears. 63-56, 153 to go in the game. 20-point lead down to seven. And free throws coming for the Bears. And he rattles the first one home. Sixty-three fifty-seven Southeastern. One fifty-three left. Kailu back in free throw, no good. Rebound cleared by Ty Brewer. So Julian into the front court. Get it over to Gonzalez. Lions just need to run the offense here. Get a quality shot, which they have not gotten the last couple possessions. Over to Starwood. Starwood to Julian. Ten seconds to shoot. Julian drives in. Kicks it near side. Gonzalez, three-pointer from the corner. That's no good. Offensive rebound. Starwood, little floater. That's no good. Rebound cleared and into the hands of Central Arkansas. As they have a chance to make it a one-possession lead. Bergerson, three-pointer near side wing. That's no good. Rebound tipped up, and this one goes out of bounds off of the Bears. Oh, the Lions have dodged a couple of bullets here, but uh, they still have the six-point lead with 1.14 to go. Timeout called by the Bears. See if they're going with a 30 or a full. They'll go with a 30, so we'll stay right with it. Reset on this one. Both teams now shooting the bonus. Uh, Southeastern is shooting the one and one the rest of the way. The Bears have been in the double bonus. I think that's like 13 or 14 fouls against the Lions here in the second half. Southeastern shooting 22 of 59 from the field for 37.3%. Central Arkansas shooting 37.3%. 19 of 51 from the field. Bears, though, are 1 of 16 from the three-point line. Southeastern 9 of 25. Bears 18 of 25 from the free throw line. Southeastern 10 of 12. Bears about rebounded the Lions 40 to 30. So now you start to get down the rest of these stats to see how the Bears are making up for, uh, you know, the three-point disparity. So... 20 turnovers for Central Arkansas, 14 for Southeastern. 28 points off turnovers for the Lions. Points in the paint again dominated by Central Arkansas, no surprise, 34 to 16. But the Lions have the lead where it matters on the scoreboard, 63-57 with a minute and change to go and exactly a minute to go now. Julian dribbles far side. They'll trap him in the corner, and he'll come back up top with nine to shoot. Julian, crossover dribble, guarded by Chatham. This is obviously going to be Julian to take the shot. Julian knocked away, and then a foul call. That was going to be against Jared Chatham, and that'll put Julian at the free throw line for a critical one and one. 46.6 seconds left, Lions by six, 63-57. But the exact guy you want at the line if you're Southeastern, front end of the one and one. This one, nothing but net. Julian, 73% free throw shooter, seven, uh, 67 of 93. But you talk about Mr. Clutch. Second free throw, Julian knocks it down. It's back to three possessions, 65-57, 46 seconds to go. Kyle Lute, pressure in the backcourt by Smith. 
Aguilute able to break the pressure. Comes near side with it over to Burgess. Oh, no, that's a foul on Brewer, and he's just fouled out. Foul called on Ty Brewer, and he fouls out with 19 points. So, Brewer whistled for the foul, and that'll do it for him. Be plenty more for Lions to see from Ty Brewer at the University Center over the next two years. But that'll be the, at least the final time this year that you'll get to see the phenom that is Ty Brewer on the University Center court. First free throw is no good for Widenauer to make that Bergerson. 38.3 seconds to go. Lions by eight. Looking for the first back-to-back -back victories of the season after defeating Northwestern State Saturday, 95-982. Second free throw is good, but it remains a three-possession game. Caldwell gets it into Smith. Smith, not a bad one to shoot free throws either. Caldwell can't find anybody. Goes back to Smith. Smith over to Julian, who gets it into the front court. Smith trapped in the corner. Make that Julian, and then he's fouled, and he'll go back to the line. 27 seconds left, and Julian can all but ice this one as the Lions lead 65-58. And a strange ball game as it looks like. Well, defensively, the Lions have been great the entire game. Uh, offensively, they've been kind of spotty, but timeout called. Uh, not sure who called it. 30-second timeout. Okay, it's a full timeout, so we'll go ahead and take one as well. We're back in a moment. Lions lead by seven. Vaughn Julian will be at the free throw line with a chance to ice this when we come back. This is Southeastern Basketball on the Southeastern Sports Network. Welcome back, Southeastern with the seven-point lead, 65-58, 27.7 seconds left. Vaughn Julian at the free throw line. Julian can maybe ice this one. First free throw, front end of the one and one, nothing but net. Julian. With five points and four assists and a couple of steals. Second free throw, nothing but net. And it is a nine-point game. And Vaughn Julian will walk off the court for his final time as a Southeastern line. Great move by head coach David Keeper to get Julian one more round of applause as Vaughn Julian's home career for Southeastern comes to an end in a positive way as the Lions lead by nine and more than likely going to get this victory. This one goes back door to Koval. Koval slams it home with 19 seconds to go and a timeout called. 67-60 our score. Lions have the lead. Julian leads the, the conference in assists coming into today. Came in with 138, add four to that total for all the mathematicians out there. Lions with a three possession lead with 19 seconds to go in their home schedule of the season. Looking to end it on a, an extremely high note, trying to get the victory here over Central Arkansas as the Lions were de uh, defeated by the Bears January 29th in Conway, 88-68, and trying to pick up the victory here today and kind of play the role of the spoiler as the Bears tied for sixth place in the conference with Northwestern State 
and McNeese. And let's see real quick. Let's take a look around at the rest of the conference and see exactly what's going on. Try to pull that up. I ended up having to do that in the post game, but let me see. All right, so Lions have the basketball. It'll be Stallwood, Saunders, Can uh, Caldwell, Smith, and Gonzalez. Northwestern State defeats the, the UNO 95-73. UIW falls to Houston Baptist 88-76. Pass in bounce to Caldwell. Caldwell will just curl up and take the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line for one and one. McNeese defeated by Nichols, 80-56. to 56. So if things hold up, Northwestern State will have sixth place all alone. And these two teams will be battling out for seventh and eighth place. Or not these two teams, but Central Arkansas and uh, – well, let's see. Yeah, Central Arkansas and McNeese will be battling out for – the seventh and eighth speeds. Running the one and one, no good. Caldwell misses. Game not over yet. 14 seconds left. 67-60. Kyulud gets it into the corner. Starwood knocks it away, but it goes in the hands of Chatham. Chatham to Koval lays it up and in with five seconds to go. Inbounds pass to Gonzalez. He's fouled, and the Lions now you can pretty much put this one in the books. Assuming Caldwell or uh, Gonzalez can. Not Knock both of these down. 67-62, Southeastern would lead just five seconds to go. All right, so let me try this again in English. I was trying to watch everything, uh, the game and uh, these updates on the scores. First free throw is good. So Central Arkansas falling to Southeastern here today. The Bears now in a... Seventh and eighth place tie, however you want to look at it, with McNeese, who fell to Nichols, 80-56. to Northwestern State winners today over UNO, 95-73. Inbounds pass, Lions by seven, three-pointer. This one is good at the buzzer for Bergerson with 1.4 seconds to go, and that'll do it. Lions win this one, 69-65, and get back-to-back -back victories. So congratulations to head coach David Keeper and the Lions as they end the home season on a big-time high note, picking up the 69-65 victory. We'll take a break. We'll come back and get ready to wrap this one up. Lions victorious. This is Southeastern Men's Basketball right here on the Southeastern Sports Network.
Welcome back to the University Center Lion fans and very happy news to report for the second consecutive day the Lions win or the second consecutive game the Lions win as they defeat Central Arkansas 69 65 19 points from Ty Brewer uh, led the way for Southeastern 16 for Brandon Gonzalez 15 for Maxwell Starwell we'll get to the stats the rest of the stats here momentarily as we're joined by a familiar face, my buddy, assistant coach for the Lions, uh, Patrick Schulte. Coach, yes. <laughs> Talk good. about two in a row, back to back. Starting to kind of, guys starting to, uh, uh, a lot of these young guys, a lot of these freshmen starting to understand what it takes uh, late in these games to win. Yeah, it was really important for all the young guys to, to send Vond off the right way, especially sure. his last game at home. Uh, he means so much to all those young guys, just showing them the way and leading by example. Uh, Vaughn will never say anything that doesn't map, that doesn't match up with his actions. Um, he's a true leader, and, and we're going to miss him a lot next year. You know, let's talk a little bit about the defense in this game. Okay, kind of sporadic offensively, but that's really, you know, that's kind of been the make of the team early this year, or for the better part of the year. It's going to happen with freshmen, but 13 steals. I mean, that's uh, we got after it from the opening tip, and just seemed like even the ones we didn't necessarily get the steal with, we were active the entire ball game, and we're winning those 50-50 balls that David Keeper talks about. Yeah, we threw a couple of different pressures at them in the first half there that we think really bothered them. They could never get into a fill. They didn't know if we were man or zone and, and our pressure, so we felt like we kept them, kept them off balance pretty good, and like you said, tonight we were getting to the loose balls, and that's, that's such a big part of winning games. Now, Another good learning curve for tonight. Of course, you get a 20-point lead, and it's hard still when you're learning like this group is to you know put that quote nail in the coffin and keep your foot on the gas. Did you feel like that kind of happened tonight a little bit, or is it just a question of a Central Arkansas team that's battling for the spot? Uh, a little, a little bit of both. It's always hard to, uh, as a, as a coach, when we won the first half by 14, you want to win the second half mm -hmm. as well. But, but it's hard. The game usually does balance itself out. Central Arkansas is a good team. They have good players. So well, they're well coached. So you knew they were going to make some runs. Uh, it was just withstanding it and um, trying to keep that lead. So I want to talk a little bit about Ty Brewer tonight. I mean, uh, it seemed to be limping a lot. Now, was that uh, did he catch a knee or was that cramps on uh, no, the leg? Or? He tweaked it a little bit when he dove for that loose ball on the baseline. So – Offensively, I mean, just when you – after getting to watch him and gets another double-double, 19 points, 10 rebounds, his ninth of the season. I mean, when you think of the future, obviously he's as much of the centerpiece of this team moving forward as anybody. I mean, uh, just how how good can Ty Brewer be moving forward? Uh, honestly, I don't think he has any idea how good he can be <laughs> yet. Um, his potential, the sky is really the limit for Ty. Uh, tonight he was 5'8 for three if, if he shoots – that will every game. He'll be the, the league MVP the next two years. Uh, he's so athletic. He can guard so many different positions. He can do so much to impact the game when he is not making jump shots. Um, trying to get him to understand that. He had four steals tonight, uh, but a solid solid double-double for Ty with 19 and 10. How big is it for this team uh, to go uh, to finish this season Saturday if, uh, to go on the road uh, to you and get the W? Oh, very. Rivalry game. Uh, we owe them. They came in here and and they roughed us up a little bit, so love to beat them in the season on a three-game winning streak and ride that momentum into spring workouts and summer workouts. Absolutely. Well, Mr. Schulte, Patrick Schulte, sir, at least for the home games, and I'm not just, just um, depends on the way things work out Saturday. I think the way uh, my broadcast booth is set up at UNO, I may not get a chance to talk to you okay. after that game, so this might be the final time for 2020, sir. So uh, if it is, it's been real, it's been fun, it's been real fun. <laughs> And uh, looking forward to more uh, in the years to come from what looks like a team that has a huge uh, success and a big uh, group of core guys that can uh, help us win a lot of games. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Ladies and gentlemen, Southeastern Assistant Coach Patrick Schulte as the Lions win this one 69-65. As we run through the final box score of this one, Southeastern 69-65 uh, victory over Central Arkansas. Hayden Koval leads Central Arkansas with 19 points, 13 for Eddie Kyulu, 12 for Ryland Burgesson, uh, nine rebounds for Kyulu as well, so he does miss the double-double, nine rebounds for Koval. Uh, 22 of 54 from the field for Central Arkansas for 
40 or for 40 percent, two of 17 from the three point line, 19 of 27 from the free throw line. They out rebounded the Lions 41 to 30, had 20 turnovers that the Lions turned into 28 points. Obviously, that's a big difference in this ball game, not to mention the nine threes by Southeastern. Ty Brewer 19 points and nine, uh, 10 rebounds, ninth double double of the season, 16 points for Brandon Gonzalez, 15 for Max Stallwood. Lions shoot 22 of 59 from the field, nine of 25 from the three point line, 16 of 19 from the free throw line. 14 turnovers for the Lions. Nine assists on the 22 field goals. 14, not 13 steals, actually it was for Southeastern as they end the home portion of their schedule on a great note. And uh, just, uh, you know, can't be more uh, happy for a guy like Vaughn Julian than I am right now. So congratulations to him. Congratulations to the Lions. They improved 8-22 and overall, 5-14 and in the conference but that will wrap things up for us fans before we finish this thing off this copyrighted broadcast uh, of southeastern basketball may not be retransmitted reproduced rebroadcast or otherwise uh, distributed without the express written consent of the southeastern louisiana university department of athletics the executive producer of the southeastern sports network jr tiggs associate producers ola ataboye and andrew b shack coordinating producers damon sunday and colton vickers our uh, director or student court or excuse me director is jamie wrights i'm chris saline reminding you once again your final score southeast Eastern 69 and Central Arkansas 65. For the final time here in 2020, thanks for following and listening to Southeastern men's basketball for the final time. Good night from the University Center. We'll see you Saturday night in New Orleans.